Great. Well, let's uh, get going. Welcome to you all um, this evening, um, joining us for this session about the Joint Public Issues Team internships. Um, uh, hopefully that means you're all in the right space. Um, we're very pleased to have you. Um, there are a few of us uh, here this evening. We'll just take a moment at the start to, to introduce ourselves, to um, say hello to you all, and then we'll chat a little bit about um, how the time we have together this evening will go. Um, so I'm Hannah. I work as part of the Joint Public Issues team as the Campaigns and Church Engagement Officer, um, and I've been really pleased to be involved um, with the interns since I started in JPIT as an intern, um, and then over the last few years as well with our, our, our sets of interns who've been coming in. Um, so really pleased to be involved again this year. Um, Matt, do you want to introduce yourself? Sure. Hi, everyone. Lovely to have you here. My name is Matt. I'm one of the JPIT interns this year, and uh, I'm, I'm sure you'll be aware by this point, uh, there are three different roles. My role is the one that's with the JPIT team full time, um, isn't one of the ones that's with House of uh, Commons, but we'll be hearing from um, my colleague Beth via video later on. She's the Conservative uh, intern as well. So I'm one of the three and Beth's going to be here as well. So um, yeah, any questions you have later on, I'll we'll have the chance to chat. Super, thanks Matt. And Jill, do you want to say hello? Yeah, hi, I'm Jill Marsh. Um, I work for the National Methodist Church, so not as part of JPIT, although I've always been inspired and tried to join in with every all their campaigning. Um, so I work as what's called the Inclusive Church Officer to help the church be more inclusive. Brilliant, and Jill's going to tell us a little bit later on um, about how that, that impacts our recruitment this year. Uh, and Dave, do you want to say uh, who you are? Yeah, thanks, Hannah. <clears throat> Welcome, everyone. I'm Dave, and I'm the Methodist team leader uh, for JPIT. I think that's probably about it. <laughs> Brilliant, perfect. And um, these guys will be joining us um, throughout the evening to answer some questions, to share some of their insights around the internships. Um, and so uh, we will see their faces popping back up uh, as we go through the evening. Um, so just to give you a sense of how we're going to use our time, um, we're hoping that we'll have um, about 45 minutes together um, uh, that when that time we'll be able to share with you guys a little bit about, um, about the internships, about the recruitment process, and also to answer any of your questions as well. Um, we uh, wanted to start off by sharing some information and then we'll come to questions towards the end of the session. But what we'd really encourage you to do is use the Q&A function um, to answer any questions as the session goes on. So if you look at the bottom of your screen, there should be a Q&A button where you can either ask your question anonymously or have your um, name attached to it as well. And we'll see those questions um, and we'll go through those um, as we go through the webinar, but also mostly towards the end. You'll also see there's a little button where you can upvote other people's questions. So if somebody asks something you were going to ask, um, feel free to use that button uh, and we'll make sure it's a priority. So do ask questions throughout the session as we go and we'll come to most of them at the end. So a quick introduction to the internships. I'm hoping that most of you um, know a little bit about them already, seeing as you are here. Um, but the Joint Public Issues team, which is made up of the Methodist Church, the Baptist Union um, and the United Reformed Church, run three internships each year. They're all full time. They all start um, this year in September 2022. Um, and we have two different kinds of roles on offer. We've got one full time intern um, who works with the Joint Public Issues team with a focus mostly on communications, engagement and research for the team. And then we've got two interns who work part time with the Joint Public Issues team and part time in the House of Commons with an MP, one with a Conservative MP and one with a Labour MP. And they split their time 50 50 between those roles. All of the roles are paid at the London Living Wage. Um, they uh, we're really proud that uh, the intern roles are a really core part of the Joint Public Issues team. Um, we often say it's it's not a tea and coffee internship, it's not a photocopying internship, it's one where you're really um, involved with and included in the work that goes on with the Joint Public Issues team and in Parliament as well in those roles. It's a really valued role in the team, which is also focused on building your experience. So these internships are aimed at recent graduates, people just starting out in their careers, particularly thinking about how you can use it as a valuable experience to think about what you want to go on and do to um, build expertise, to have experience in different areas of, of either political life, faith life, um, campaigning and advocacy, um, to develop your skills, but also develop your curiosity about what might be out there um, in the rest of your career as well. Um, so with that kind of overview started, I, I'd like to bring in Matt, who's one of our current interns, 
So Matt is our joint public issues team intern um, at the moment. And Matt, I wonder if you could just start off by telling us a little bit about what your journey to the internship was like. Sure. Um, so I guess it begins with uh, my story of faith, really. Um, and I won't tell the whole thing now, but uh, essentially I've I've always felt that um, my Christian faith should have something to say to the, the big questions in the world around me. Why is there so much suffering? Why is there inequality? Uh, why do some people seem to win and others seem to lose? And long story short, I came to the conclusion that um, politics was one of, the, uh, one of the means in which we could maybe start to ask, try an answer, I soon found out. Some of our answers aren't great, um, but, but but was a means of kind of working for change in the world. And I, I decided that that was, that was what I wanted to investigate more. So I went away and I studied politics at university. Uh, and after I graduated, I spent six months working with a think tank called the Jubilee Center. Um, and their MO uh, at the time uh, was about, um, uh, the course that I was on was about training uh, young Christians to think biblically about social reform. Um, so going through uh, a range of different topics and thinking about what a, what a biblical approach to, um, to that might be, whether that's the economy or the arts or justice or politics or, or, or all sorts of things. Um, so that's basically what I was doing up to the time I applied to JPIT. Um, and that role involved a bit of research um, and writing, which I, I think was was helpful experience in order to get get this job as well. Perfect. And um, is there anything that sort of after you started the internships or as you're going through the applications process that surprised you about the role? Yeah, there's a few things. Um, Hannah's kind of hinted at this already, but I think one of the main things is really just how much responsibility you have in the team. Um, JPIT isn't, isn't a massive team. There's only 11, 12 of us, um, and three of those people are interns. So that means that as one of the three interns, you are responsible for quite a large part of, of what JPIT does. Um, yeah, it's not just a tea and coffee internship. And so you can really get stuck into um, some really important issues, um, be given responsibility to, to lead campaigns even, um, and, and kind of learn to speak with the JPIT voice. Um, so yeah, that was really great. Um, I think another thing was, um, coming fairly fresh out of university and having done some, some research and longer pieces of writing. Um, it's been really helpful for me to learn about more shorter forms of communication and rather than using long academic words um, and uh, complex sentences with lots of clauses, uh, how do you write succinctly and how do you convey a message and how do you think about um, taking people from point A on an issue to point B um, and, and thinking strategically about that. Um, that kind of, uh, yeah, focus on, 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 on effective communication has been a really interesting learning point. Um, and I think also, you know, as someone who was interested in politics before and sort of thought about these issues um, through the lens of what's happening in the news and what's happening in Parliament, one of the things that I've actually really loved about working at JPIT is that we, we don't really stop there, but we, we think a lot about the effect of policies on people. Uh, and on lived experience um, and there are a number of ways in which you get to hear a lot of those stories um, and a lot of the um, impact that, that what's happening in, in, in public life is, is having on people across the country um, and that's been a real um, <laughs> sadness at times because some things are, are tragically sad but actually a real encouragement and a blessing that you get to receive that you know you're not just in a Westminster bubble but you do um, get an impression of, of, of what impact this is having on the country so um, yeah, I'll, I'll leave it at that, but it's um, certainly been surprising and enlightening in lots of ways. Brilliant, thank you. And we'll get to hear maybe a little bit more about this later when we come to kind of Q&A, but what one piece of advice would you give to somebody who's thinking about applying to the internships? Um, in, in a sense, it's quite conventional careers advice, but I'll, I'll try and tailor it a bit more to this role in particular, and that's don't count your unconventional things out. Um, the, 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 the things that you have in your um, skill set in your past that you'll put on your CV that might not appear directly relevant can really be the things that make you stand out. Um, if you can find a way of, of um, talking about what skills they've given you and, and what experience they've been. Um, you know, lots of people will have a lot of the conventional things and it's actually often something that stops and makes you think, oh, I've not really, I've not really seen that before. Oh, I've not really considered that before that can really make your application shine. 
Um, so don't be afraid to put stuff down that maybe doesn't seem immediately relevant um, because we're keen to have people with lots of different experience and, and ways of thinking inside, outside the box and, and, and uh, things like that. So yeah, don't shy away from, from putting that stuff down. Thank you, Matt. That's really helpful. And we'll um, see you again a little bit later on as we answer some questions that have come through. Um, one of our other interns, um, Beth, wasn't able to be with us this evening, um, but she's recorded us um, a short video to share a little bit about um, her experience in coming to the internships um, and um, what she's enjoyed particularly about her role. Um, so we will play that for you now. Hi. My name is Beth and I'm the current JPIT House of Commons intern with a Conservative MP and I'm just going to spend a few minutes sharing with you about my experience and sorry that I can't join you this evening. Um, my journey to this role as an intern here I think might surprise some people. I haven't been involved in politics before particularly. I've been interested but not necessarily engaged in politics. I'm not, I wasn't and I'm still not a member of a political party um, but when I was sent the job application by my dad, I think he found it online and thought of me, uh, when I was reading through the different responsibilities and the opportunity to actually go into parliament and to work for an MP whilst also getting to be really embedded with this incredible team at JPIT. It just really resonated with me. And the, particularly the JPIT values, um, the six hopes, I hope you've read them, you definitely should. Um, they really struck me as such a holistic way of caring for people, of seeking justice in by caring for the whole person and engaging politically in order to achieve that. Uh, really, yeah, really resonated with me and inspired me to apply. Uh, previously, I've done all different types of work, worked in cafes, um, I've actually got a theology degree, never studied politics, which I thought would really stand against me, but I'm here, so obviously not too much. Um, and most recently I was working for a charity, doing internal communications as an intern again, um, and I was able to share some of that experience in my application process about how I'd work in communications and um, what I'd used in that role and apply that here. Um, as I said, I thought that having less political experience or even knowledge, I guess, would count against me having not studied politics. And my number one fear when I arrived was that I'd come into the office here at Methodist Church House or I'd go to Parliament and someone would come to me and say, what do you think about this? Or I'd just be expected to know what I thought on every given topic at once. And I was like, I, that, I just don't, that's not the case. Um, and honestly, it still isn't. I mean, we're always learning. Um, but I was so relieved that that wasn't the case that I didn't feel the pressure to have fully formed political opinions. Because that's kind of the point, that's kind of the point of this internship, I guess, to learn to immerse in the world and to get a handle on different political issues and what you might think. And I've certainly been able to develop some of my own thinking um, during this time. Uh, so what surprised me the most, maybe that, maybe, um, being accepted and able to engage and not feel intimidated particularly or pressured. Um, I've also been surprised by how much I really value the JPIT team themselves. Um, my work in Parliament often, you have a very small team, you might not have that much um, support day to day, but the JPIT team themselves have been an incredible support and kind of my go-to colleagues, I guess, um, to chat with and hang out with and um, I really, yeah, enjoy getting to know them. So what one piece of advice would I give you if you're thinking about applying to one of the internships? Um, and it obviously is, go for it. But I think more specifically, it's to think about the different things that you have done in your experience and your background that could feed into this kind of role. Um, as I said, I haven't had loads of political experience, but I've done 
uh, quite a bit of community work and I've done some youth work and been involved in my neighbourhood and community and seen the issues that affect people day to day and I think that being able to show that you care about justice, that you want to see people's lives change for the better and that you and, and being able to share that experience and show how those skills that you developed in those completely varied and different settings, whatever that might be for you, how that experience feeds into this role. Um, because otherwise, the people who are interviewing you are not going to know um, what you learn and, and how that could apply. So I think that's the best thing to do, give it some thought. Um, and also be really interesting for us to hear. Um, the interviewers would love to know. Um, yeah, all the best. Bye. Brilliant. So we just wanted to share a bit of Beth's experience with you to show that there is no one path um, to the internships. Really what we're looking for is for people to tell us how their experiences, whatever those might have been, um, make them suitable for the for the role um, and would make them a, a good and interesting candidate, but also somebody who'd really get something out of the experience um, that's offered by the year. So I just wanted to share with you now some details about the application process, which we hope will give you a bit more of an insight um, into um, what the application is like um, and some of the things that you can particularly be looking out for. Um, hopefully you guys haven't filled out your applications yet um, and that you're still kind of working on those. You've got a bit of time before um, the deadline comes. Um, but there are there are a couple of different parts to the application process. You've got your written application, which is the first thing that you'll do um, that you submit through a system um, called Recruitment Plus. And if you're shortlisted, um, you'll then go to um, an online interview, um, which are taking place on the 4th and the 5th of May. Um, so that there's two stages um, to the application there. And in your online interview, you'll also be offered the chance to do um, a presentation. And what we're really looking for across that whole process is for you to demonstrate to us how you fit with the person specification um, that goes alongside the job role. So um, if you look on the um, on the website where the ad advertisements are for the internship, you can download a couple of documents um, on there. And one of those is the person specification and job description. And that'll give you a little bit more detail about what the particular tasks are of the intern, the things you might be doing day to day but also the qualities that we are looking for to, to match those tasks. And the way that we process our applications in the Methodist Church is that we look through that, that person specification and we look at the application that's been handed to us and we see how well those, those two things match up. So we take the, the qualities on the person spec and see how somebody has evidenced those in their application. So what we'd really encourage you to do is spend some time as you're writing your application, going through the person specification and thinking, what experience do I have that really applies to those things? And tell us not just that you meet those criteria. It might be really good that you're a, a hard team worker, um, but how you can demonstrate that to us. Is there an experience you've had um, in your life that demonstrates that well? And tell us a little bit about that. So the shortlist for the online interviews is created by the people who score best um, on those criteria. So really, it's both about the people who match best, but the people who also the people who've told us that they match best. A bit like um, Beth said, um, we can't know about experiences you've had unless you tell us. So really think about what is best to include um, in that space. So usually about five people are shortlisted for interview and are invited to, to interview online on those days and it'll be on Zoom. And usually at that interview, um, there is a, a written test on the interview day that will give us a chance to um, look at particularly some of your, your communication skills, your written skills, and often that'll be focused around a task that you, that's similar to what you might be carrying out um, if you were successful in getting the role. Um, there'll be a presentation and then a question and answer style interview. And really, we would just really want to um, reiterate that throughout that whole process, what we're looking for is to find out a little bit more about you and how well you fit with the person specification. And for us, that's not just about looking at somebody who can do the job really well, but somebody who'd really grow um, in the role, who'd really value the experience. So do communicate that to us as well. What is it that's motivating you to apply um, and how do you think that this year might be beneficial to you? Um, one of our top tips would just be that there is a word count on the application. 
So I just encourage you to, um, to go through um, onto the system and to look at the application form itself as you fill it out online, just so that you know how your answers um, get input into the system and to make sure you don't type a really brilliant answer up and then suddenly discover that half the words uh, go missing when you put it uh, into the system. So we just really encourage you to click through all the steps of the application process just to familiarise yourself with that as well. I'm going to bring in um, Dave now, um, who's our, our team leader in the Methodist Church and is involved with the recruitment. Um, Dave, what top tips do you have for people who are who are going through the application process, process for the internships? Thank, thanks, Hannah. Um, some of these actually people have alluded to already. Um, I mean, the first thing I would say is you have to give evidence um it, it's fine if the person spec says um that you know you need to be a team player you can say i'm a team player but we need to find some evidence for that so find examples where you can say i've been part of a team and as part of the team i had the following roles i did the following uh jobs and uh that's how i was part of the team um it as as has kind of been alluded to already we we don't know anybody who's on the other side of the application form so all we see is um is the words that you write and so we need to see that yeah okay we've got an example here where this person has been a team player and that yeah we can say big tick there that we can put the score against it and then your your score is beginning to sort of build up um i think that um uh, as well don't don't think you have to have examples from work um you know you can have examples uh from any part of your life because you can relate them to to the sort of person that you are and how you how you do match up to the person spec so you know if you've not been in a workplace situation where you've been in a team if that's the just keeping with the analogy of the team player you know if you've worked with a community group i think uh, beth said that you know some of her experience was around community groups bring that into it because that all counts and uh, you won't be marked down because it's not a, a workplace experience it's all experience uh, that reflects the person spec um i think as well when you're doing that it's really important to to be able to share with those of us that will see the application um something of you and your character and what you would bring to the role through that experience you have had so you know, expand the, the, you know, don't just give us, yes, I've done this, but actually share a little bit about yourself in the way that you did it, in the way that you were part of um, the team, if we're keeping with that example. Um, I think that it's really important, and uh, Hannah mentioned this, there is the word count. And, and so I would really, this is a real, real practical bit of top tip, I think, is what, Find out what the word count is and then write your answers um, on a, you know, on a word document somewhere else and hone them down so that you get the best in the amount of words you have. Believe you me, when I've applied for a job through this system, I, I wrote and wrote and wrote and only to find <laughs> all these good words I had to really edit down. Um, so that is part of it. And I think part of that top tip there as well, another top tip is, you know, long answers aren't necessarily the best and and so you haven't got uh, an infinite number of words so try and be as concise as possible in your answers while still sharing your experience and will while still telling us a little bit about yourself um i think also just remember and i know some people find this difficult but there is a sense in which you have actually got to sell yourself to us <laughs> because we don't know otherwise we and so it is important to recognize that that is part of what you're doing but i think a really good tip is is to share what you're planning to put in the application with those people that know you best because actually they will be able to tell you if you're underselling yourself or maybe they'll tell you if you're overselling yourself as well but actually those people you trust those people that know you best who may be able to say actually do you know what you can put something in here that that says so much more about you which will help those people who are shortlisting and those people that are interviewing um and and the final thing is really practical thing as well is i'd say keep the date of the interview free <laughs> because um 
if you if you get an interview, then you need to be free on that day to do the written um, work, which will be uh, sent to you on the morning. Um, you may be interviewed in the afternoon, but actually, so you need to be available all day to to take part in the process. Um, and don't do what I did the last time I applied for a job, which was organise something else because I didn't think I got the interview. And so I actually did my written test, sat in the car, and I'll confess that now, but it was not the best place to do it. So just uh, keep the day free uh, in case you do get the interview. Thanks, Hannah. Brilliant, thanks, Dave. Um, and just so we are hoping to give it at, at the very least a week's notice um, if you get, are shortlisted for interview, so you should have time to make arrangements as well. And you'll be sent a time slot as well um, for that. Um, and one thing um, I think it's important to mention is that all of the um, application process is anonymous. So those who are shortlisting don't actually um, see uh, any of the personal details of the person who's applying. All we see is your answers um, to the questions that you submit. Um, so we won't find out your, your name or any details about you until later on in the process. So that, um, that is all anonymous as well. Um, I just want to, to bring in Jill at this stage. So one of the things you'll probably have picked up um, through the application process is that these roles are hosted by the Methodist Church. Um, so we work ecumenically as a team, but the interns are particularly sit within the Methodist Church um, and fall under those structures. And at the moment, the Methodist Church is particularly prioritising um, some particular work around justice, dignity and solidarity. So, so Jill's just going to tell us a little bit more about what that work is and how it might affect this process. So over to you, Jill. Yeah, thank you. Um, Hannah's right. We are at the moment emphasising justice, dignity and solidarity, but we're also expecting that to be a kind of an ongoing thing forever. <laughs> um, it's basically what lots of organisations call our EDI work, so our equality, diversity and inclusion work. Because we're a, um, a church, because we're a yeah, Christian charity, we we actually believe that equality is about justice. So there's a link there with JPIT. Um, it's blatantly obvious that people are diverse and that the world is diverse, but we're about trying to make sure everybody is treated with dignity. Um, and we, we do believe that we want to include people, not because we've got the right to choose who to include, but because God includes us all. So we're really glad all of you are here, whether you get these uh, internships or not, because it's about developing who we are as ourselves and exploring where God might want us to go and to be. So just in relation to the... Um, Th these internships, I, I, I kind of got in the I got in the mood of thinking about tips, Hannah, <laughs> and I was thinking in relation to our strategy. I would definitely say uh, yes, you do have to sell yourself, but start by valuing yourself because it's really hard to to sell yourself if you don't know <laughs> your value. So basically, think of yourself as God sees you. You know, think about who you are and how uh, precious you are, and then work out as everybody's just said. You know what you can. Um, Think about your own experience, your, your own personality, your own character, your own characteristics. And what the Methodist Church is really keen to do is to try and build diverse teams across the whole Methodist Church, because we genuinely believe um, that the human race is, is richly diverse and that God's created every one of us um, in God's image. And so we, we want to have teams which reflect that because we all bring something different into the teams that we work in. So. One of the reasons for doing these workshops, and I'm grateful to Jay Pitt for um, helping us to sort of trial them, but one of the reasons for doing these workshops is that depending on your experience in life, sometimes people imagine they couldn't do something um, and there are bits that put them off without even realising. So hopefully this will have um, given you a clear sense that you, you have every right to apply. We want you to apply. We want you to tell us all about yourself. And I think maybe one of you that's on Jay Pitt and not me... <laughs> might know a bit more about this but I was just going to say you know please if you've got any support needs um, or anything that you think might cause a difficulty for you in doing the work don't don't assume that means you can't do it just be explicit about what you might need support with or what you might what might want help with um, and that might well include home working space if you're working from home you know we don't want anybody to not get this internship because they're um, living in a very small space with lots of other people and can't work from home very easily so if there's any issues around any of that kind of stuff then feel free to you know have your own voice uh, to tell um, us all what it is that you would need to be able to do this work and bring your life experience as well as yourselves so I think that's all I was going to say um, I could say lots more about strategy but it would take me all night so I won't do that unless anybody asks a question <laughs> it's on the website I should have said that Hannah <laughs>
yeah absolutely you've got all sorts of new stuff on the website and uh, in, if you look on the home page and then you search inclusive methodist church you'll find stuff there brilliant yeah so if you go onto the methodist church website you can find out a little bit more about that work um, I think one of the things Jill said there is is really important is that don't rule yourself out of the process before you've even started. We'd really encourage you to think about all the things that would make you um, a really great candidate for this role and to tell us about them. Um, you know, if you rule yourself out before you've even um, got in the race, um, then that, that might be a real disappointment for something that we could have really benefited from. We could really benefit from your partnership and your work with the team. Um, so we'd, we'd love for you to be part of the application process, um, whatever you bring um, in that whole range of diversity. Um, and I think one of the other things Jill said that I just want to encourage around as well is that these roles are hosted by churches and faith is a really big part of who we are um, and who, how we work as a team. So I would really encourage you as well um, to tell us a little bit about your faith in the application. There are some particular aspects of the person specification um, that talk about that, but don't shy away from telling us about how your faith journey um, has impacted where you are in your own career, in your work life. Um, as well because those two things um, really intersect for us um, it's a big thing for our, our team to think about how our faith impacts our lives um, day to day so we'd really encourage you to include that in your application as well brilliant so um, we've got a time now for for some question and answer and um, so if you want to use the Q&A um, at the bottom of the screen to ask us your questions um, they can be as practical um, if you know if you've got a question about the details of the application process or about the internships, how they might be run, what the working setup is like, please do ask those or if they're broader questions about the process, um, ask those as well. Um, I'll bring um, Jill, Dave and Matt back onto the screen so that they can answer some of the questions um, as well. Um, but maybe to get us started, um, we've, we've covered this a little bit already. But um, just kind of as a starting question, what would you say to somebody who's on the fence, who kind of thinks, oh, I'm, I'm not sure whether I should apply. I'm not sure if it's for me. Um, is it the right opportunity for me? Is it is it too early in the year? You know, what would you what advice would you give to somebody who's still making the decision about whether this is the right thing for them? I don't know who wants to pick that up first? Everyone's keeping quiet. So, <laughs> um I mean, we've heard it before. Um, actually, I would say actually, just do it. Get the application in. Um, you know, part part of applying for a role, applying for a job, uh, it's not just about those people who are shortlisting and interviewing, sort of de deciding and discerning who might be the best in the role. It's also about those people who are applying, discer discerning whether or not uh, this role is for them. And I think you can't you know, if you get an application in and if you get shortlisted and get an interview, that's a real place where you can test at that out. Um, and you may come to the interview and say, actually, do you know, it's not for me, but you may come to the interview and go, actually, I really, I really want this. Uh, so I, I would say just, yeah, please just fill it in and, and apply. Thanks, Dave. Any, any other thoughts, Jill and Matt? I mean, there's a very obvious point that you don't get any jobs that you don't apply to. Um, and putting an application in isn't committing to saying yes as well. Um, so if you're even marginally on the fence and you have the, the time and the headspace to put an, an application in, um, I would really encourage you to do so. And I may be biased, but I'd say it's definitely worth it. It's a <laughs> fantastic place to work. But Dave's absolutely right, actually, in that the process isn't just about um, JPIT discovering who they want to point but for you particularly if you're applying for multiple things at once that's a really really important and really helpful part of the process for you for discerning between different uh different options and for me personally when i applied to the jpit internship i applied to quite a few um roles that were similar in different ways um and um got a real sense from going to interviews there that actually i didn't think it was the right thing for me um and that might be the case for you with jp or it might be a positive thing um but you can't find that out unless you get there um so yeah i appreciate that that for some of you you'll be um very busy and you'll have lots of demands on your time but um yeah get the application and get it in early so you're not too stressed and you have the chance to get people to look it over as well if that's possible um, but yeah you you can't get a, get the jobs that you don't apply to so if you're at all interested please do please do put your application in thanks matt brilliant and um 
just uh, just to remind people that the deadline for the applications is there um, the 18th of April, so that's a week on Monday, I think. Um, I wonder, um, so we've got one um, the question that's just come in here um, that asks what sort of careers have previous interns um, gone on to do after the internship? Um, I can probably answer that, that question a little bit, thinking about the last few um, years worth of interns. Um, people have gone on to a whole range of things, actually. We've, we've had people go on to further study, a couple of people who've gone on to do master's or postgraduate study um, after they've been with us, particularly where they've kind of honed down their interests whilst they've been with us and um, had a chance to work on things that have actually influenced um, what, they've, what they've gone on to study more about. We've had people who've carried on working in Parliament um, with MPs, um, gone on to work with other MPs um, who they've met through their time in Parliament and actually built relationships with. Um, we've had people go into the civil service, um, into other charity work, um, people go into work for the church in other capacities as well, um, either in policy roles or in kind of local church roles, which I'm wrecking my brains for different people over the last few years. Um, yeah, I think that, I mean, it's a real range, actually. Um, sometimes people come with an expectation of what, what the year might take them on to. Sometimes it completely throws things open um, for people and they, they go on to something that they never expected. Um, I knew that during my year as an intern in the team, um, I discovered that I was passionate about things that I'd never heard anything about before. Um, and that was a real gift. Um, so uh, it's, it's been a really good stepping stone for people. And actually the range of experience you get across the internship is really a really helpful tool in applying to roles afterwards as well. Matt's nodding in the hope that that will be part of his experience over the next few months as well. Um, but yeah, the, you, you learn to do a whole range of things and it, and it makes for good resources you're applying for roles um, too. One thing to add in there as well is that we do try and help our interns network during the year. Um, so actually building relationships with other people across the, the sector that JPIT works in particularly. It's a really good way to meet people, um, get careers advice, a bit of mentoring from people, um, but also so that you can see what opportunities uh, are coming up as well. So we've got a question um, as well for the um, Joint House of Commons and JPIT internships. How does time get split between the two roles? Is there much interaction and how are they balanced? Um, Dave, I wonder if you could speak to that for us. Yep, thanks. Uh, so um, the the time split is basically it's two and a half days in uh, with the MP and two and a half days with the the JPIT team. So it is balanced in in that sense, um, and it tends to be um, Monday and Tuesday. Uh, and Wednesday afternoon is House of Commons, and then Wednesday morning, Thursday and Friday is is the JPIT work. Um, so it, it is quite balanced, and we um, obviously it's it's also quite separate. Um, you're, you're not a JPIT mole in in a in a conference or in the, in an MP's office or in the Commons uh, in any way, shape, or form. And, and the work that you do with the MP that's all sort of decided with the MP's team. Um, and obviously with, with you and, and what you want to get out of that, etc. Um, and the work that you do in JPIT, you'll be working with members of the team, very often with uh, particular projects uh, that you'll work on. And again, that's a case of seeing what sort of things interest you, what's on the work plan for JPIT, where do those two things sort of come together, or, or maybe even actually, as Hannah said, she found out she was interested in things she didn't know she was interested in. So there is a chance to, to broaden your horizons as well. Yeah, definitely. I think one of the things that, um, that I've heard from previous years of the um, of the joint interns in the House of Commons and the JPIT interns is that actually the ability and the, uh, the opportunity to work on both sides of the table is a really good thing about that internship. So you're working inside Parliament and thinking about how parliamentarians and elected officials respond to issues as they arise. But then in your JPIT time, you're thinking about how does the wider civil society influence change? And actually the experience of looking at both sides of that process is, is quite a unique one um, and something that gives you a flavour of, of what perhaps pursuing a career in both of those spaces might look like, where your skills and gifts are best suited, but also strengthening you in each of those roles um, as you understand the kind of relationship that they have with, with one another. And so, so it's a really good opportunity in that sense. Um, just another um, chance for you to ask any questions um, before we wrap up. You'll also be able to ask questions. If you log off the webinar and think, oh, I really should have asked that, you can get in touch with us um, 
at JPIP by email. We have an inquiries email address that is just inquiries at jointpublicissues.org.uk. And you can find that on our website as well um, so that you can get in touch with us there and ask any questions and we'll, we will do our best to answer those. Um, I wonder, um, Dave, if I just come back to you as well, um, if you might be able to speak a little bit to the arrangement, the working arrangements for the internships, um, just uh, so that people are aware, is this something that they'll be in an office lots of the time for? Are they expected to come to lots of face-to-face -face meetings? We've all got used to kind of remote working. How much does that factor in? Yeah, so, I mean, as, as Hannah said, we've kind of got used to, to remote working and currently in the Methodist Church, we're, we're operating under a, a hybrid um, way of working, which means that it's partly office-based and it's partly home-based. Um, and so our parliamentary interns tend to be in the Methodist office one day a week. Um, and Matt, who is our sort of uh, full-time office-based <laughs> intern is here for three days uh, a week, which is the expectations. Um, the, the, the House of Commons interns the arrangement for when you're in the House of Commons that that is sorted out with your MP and the and the office, um, and and that will be again that needs to be negotiated as to to what they're expecting. Um, we we are slightly sort of um, in in upheaval in the Methodist Church because um, I'm currently sat in Methodist Church House, which is where J Pitt has an office at the moment. But at the end of August, so before this internship year starts, we're actually moving out of this building and uh, we will be having some temporary office space before our new office space is, is ready for us to move into. Um, and we're, we're a little bit um, not sure of the exact arrangements, but there will be office space available. Um, and so there might be a need to be a little bit flexible um, until we know exactly what space there is. Um, but in terms of meetings, we, we meet regularly as JPIT and we have regular online meetings, but we also have monthly face-to-face uh, -face meetings. Um, and I think just to sort of um, say that obviously the, the we we can the the JP intern could possibly be home based and that is that is definitely a possibility and that can be explored with people um, uh, through through. Um, after uh, if the if the role is offered to them, we we can explore that and what that means. Um, I, I think personally um, that the more that we can be together as a team actually helps the team. It, it's really important. It can it. It's great. We've got technology and we, we can be at home. We can do all those things. But actually, there's nothing like a day when we're in the office and we're and we're bouncing ideas off each other. We're getting really to know each other. It builds really builds up the working relationship far better. So uh, I think, you know, if the best the best scenario is if people can get into the office um, and, and, and to be part of that team. But we can we can accommodate home based working. Thanks, Dave. That's really helpful. Yeah, and I think the big thing to take away from that is that we want to make um, the internship opportunity work for you um, as you will work best, as you'll get most out of the year. Um, and we can we can certainly work with anybody who um, who has flexible needs or needs us to be flexible around um, accommodating um, different working environments. I know from, from living in a shared house, for example, it's really nice to have an office space so that you can kind of escape a little bit and do your work somewhere else. Um, but it's also nice to have, you know, those days at home where you can put the washing on and make sure uh, uh, you can get those things done as well. So, so we're, we're fully um, embracing the opportunities that hybrid working um, offers to us, but are also really prepared to, to work around um, things as well. Brilliant. So I think we're coming to the uh, end of our time. So thank you so much um, for joining us. Just a reminder that the deadline for applications is there um, the 18th of April um, and that the interviews are on the 4th and the 5th of May. And if you have any questions between now and then, please do get in touch with us um, at inquiries at jointpublicissues.org.uk. We'd be really pleased to chat those um, things through. Um, and just a real encouragement that we'd love to see your applications um, come in for those roles. Um, and we look forward to getting to know you a bit better through that process. Um, thank you very much for joining us.